Hi, my name is Susan. I work for South Lan Lanarkshire Leisure and Culture and today we're going to do a little bit of applique on a textured background. I've got a bit of a background, um, textured background on this just to bring the flower out a little bit. So how I have started is a sandwich kind of thing. I've got a piece of thin cotton, anything at all. It can be calico or cotton, whatever you have. I've got some felt, but that could be batting if it's if you don't have white felt in the house. And then I've got my piece of white fabric. And what I'll do first is, is pin this. I'm just going to pin it just so that when I start to um, so it's not all starting to move about. Now the texture could be just straight lines, but I decided on di diamonds with a a double stitch on it because I thought it would look a wee bit different. Now to work out the diamonds, all I did was I turned the fabric over and I used a business card as my width. So that's 5.5 centimetres wide. And what I did was I marked the middle of the fabric. And then I'm going to just take lines off of that. Let's get a ruler. And then lightly draw the lines on it and using the card as my width. It doesn't need to be that wide, but I just found it the easiest way to um, have everything kind of uniform. There's no need to draw the other line in because we'll just do that with the, the needle position. I'm just going to start to sew. I'm going to put first of all the needle position in one, which is the centre position, and just using the automatic st stitch length.
So that's all the first stitches done. We've got a bit of texture in the front and what I'm going to do is just change the, the needle position to do the kind of tram lines. So I'm going to go to zero in this machine, which puts the needle position to the left hand side. And this time I'm going to do it on the right side so I can see clearly where I'm going. I'm going to put my foot right next to the stitching that I've just done and just carry on again. And that's the background done for just now. So you've got a bit of a texture going on and it just pulls out the flower a bit more. So the next part will be cutting the pattern. What I did was I just got a drawing, a line drawing, maybe downloaded off the internet or from a pattern and marked the two colours that I wanted in felt pen. I then went round the petals just to mark one, two, three, four, five, so that I knew where I was going to place them. I cut each one of these shapes out into card, which I have here. So I can put the corresponding ones in where I want them. And then what I'm going to do is cut these shapes out onto fabric. Before I did this, the fabric that I had chose for the petal colour and for the green for the leaves, I ironed some bondo web onto the back of it. So I've got just a small piece of fabric here with bondo web on the back. And then I'm going to turn it upside down and draw each petal on it. Now I've marked F in the front so I know that this is the front. I'm just going to do it upside down. stalk's going the other way but it wouldn't matter. Um, the stem make it just slightly longer so that it's going to go underneath the, the petal, okay? And that's all my pieces ready to iron. So what I'm going to do first is peel off the backing of the bondo web. This can be quite tricky. And then you can see if it's stuck all right, you can see the glue actually on the, the pieces. Um, 
sometimes you might need to iron it quite heavy. I'll show you a piece that hasn't been ironed right. So you can see when it, the, the glue's actually stuck when it's darker rather than the pale bit there. And that's all my pieces ready to iron on to the background. Once you've placed all your pieces in position, what I've done, I've, I've put the stock on first so that the, the petal overlaps it, so it's not just button up into the edge and you get a nicer finish. Don't worry too much about getting all the petals joining because we're going to satin stitch around them and that's going to take up a bit of space. So you want them kind of a wee bit of space in between. And everything's in place, I'll just put this down in case there's any glue coming through. I'm just holding the iron down rather than ironing up and down just to get the glue sticking. It might take a couple of goes. I think that's all right. To do the satin stitch, I think the best thing to do is have a piece of scrap fabric that you can check your stitches on. So in this machine, I'm selecting four, which is a zigzag. Be careful and not select a straight stitch, a, a stretch stitch, which is the one before it. It's a zigzag at an angle. You don't get such a good result with that one. Then I'm going to select the width of the stitch and the length of the stitch. This one here's the length and I'm going to be just going up and down them until I'm satisfied with the, the satin stitch widths. So that's quite wide, I'll just bring it right down. Starting quite wide and bringing it down. I think that's alright but I want it neater. a wee bit tighter, bring the stitch length down a wee bit more. You don't want it too, sit, the stitch is sitting on top of the cell so don't bring it right down to the bottom or you end up with just like a bumper of um, threads. I'm quite happy with that so. Start right at the petal, needle down first, and then up. Just gently moving the fabric so it's it's quick machining and slow movement of your fabric. zigzag foot on this machine here which has a clear part in the middle of it it makes you be able to see what's underneath so if you can see through the toe and just follow the the pattern and I'm getting to a really tight corner I'm going to just shunt the fabric around just a wee bit When I'm repositioning this piece, I don't want a great big load of thread on the, the start of the stitch. So once I find out where I'm 
going to start. I'm just going to pull the thread back through so it's nice and neat. Just keep your needle down when you're pivoting round. I'm going to go oh, a wee bit over here to look as if the, the, the leaves folding. And then reposition the needle down underneath it. We'll pull through the threads to the back just to make a neater finish. We'll do that at the end. So changing up to the red colour now. Before I start the satin stitch on the petals. I'm going to do a few kind of vein type things. It just gives it another bit of interest. So I'm going back to a straight stitch with the needle in the centre position. And I'm going to make this stitch quite small. So I'm going to choose a kind of low part in the stitch length. I'll just give that a wee try. Just starting in the centre position and just making some lines. Oh, there's my thread out again, of course. So needle in position and just move it wiggly about the right to the end and then coming back up the way. I'm going to join it to the first stitch and we'll catch all these threads in the satin stitch when we go around it and this one I'll just trim so. so I'm just going to continue right round all the leaves with some sort of veins Just trim down the threads, so you don't need to pull these ones through because they will get caught underneath the satin stitching as we go around the outside of the, the petals. So yet again, I'm going to have to just double check the stitch as I've been messing about with the, the length of it. Okay. 
Okay, I'll do that. And start from the centre point. This is a wee bit more trickier because there's quite a lot of curves in it, so it's a matter of just taking it slow when you're going round the corners. So I'm just going to pull the, the ends through into the back and tie them off. So using a pin, you can just see if we've that thread's lifting up. I don't know if you can see that. I'll put my shape out. And you've got that one. And then I have another one down here to do. Off. These ones are not going to be able to be found, I don't think. Okay, what's left just to do is the little black seed sew on it. That could either be done by hand or just a couple of little satin stitches, reducing them. I'll show you how to do that. Just need a practice fabric, just you can try the satin stitch you're already doing and just reducing the width of it. So you get sort of little seed light things. So you start to even higher up. I'm just pulling it down. down to start and just have your finger on the width and that's where I'm going to block the way.
do another one here, I think. And that's your finished applique. You just trim the edges and you can either bind it or you could mount it. 